Okay, continuing our discussion about graphical displays of univariate data, let's take a look or talk a little bit about the different shapes of the data that you will come across during your analysis. All right, suppose you um, go ahead and you do a histogram. Collect some data, complete the histogram, and in general, the histogram looks kind of like this. Now, if I were to draw just a, um, a curve, kind of hitting the edges here, the general shape of that curve is mound shaped. And more commonly, if we have a distribution that looks mound shaped, we refer to it as being bell shaped, or at least approximately bell shaped. Now, these shapes of these distributions are kind of important because when you look at the shape of, of the data, that will quite often direct you in, in the right direction to continue your analysis. Another common shape that you could come up with or see, suppose we did a histogram, and what we saw in that histogram was essentially a mound, but then it tails off to the right. If I, again, if I were to draw a line, you see this tail here essentially moving over to the right. We would refer to this shape as being specifically skewed right. Now, obviously, if we did a histogram and it went the other way, the general shape had a tail going to the left, we would call that skewed left. Okay, more common shapes. Um, it's not all that uncommon to do a histogram and if you look at the overall shape you see two mounds, two very distinct mounds. If they're obvious, two obvious mounds where they're much higher than everybody else, than all the other um, bars around it, then what we refer to this as being by modal because of our by two two modes. Now, if it looks reasonably symmetric, often we will say it's by modal symmetric. Something like this is clearly by modal, but it is not by modal symmetric. Um, if we see something, let me erase this and use that spot again. Oops, put that back. By modal. If I see something that has um, perhaps three obvious mounds to it, not three mounds if you squint and kind of pretend a little bit, but three obvious higher peaks, one, two, three, we would refer to this as being trimodal. Now, if we have something that has uh, several mounds to it, like more than three, there's four, I believe it is in five, one, two, three, four, five. We refer to this as simply being multi-motor. It needs to be more than three obvious peaks. Not, oh, well, this bar looks like it's a little bit higher than that bar. No, it's just, it's got to be obvious. If it's pretty clear that this particular class width is higher, this particular class is clearly higher, or the general shape is going up and down like that, then we're talking about modes. But if you have to squint at it and, and really use your imagination, you're probably not seeing a mode there. The last very common shape, do a histogram, and what you see is something that looks kind of like this. Let me draw a few more on here. Now, the basic shape here that I'm seeing, if I were to draw my um, box around this thing, essentially, it is just a box. And what we do is what we refer to this as being as approximately or reasonably uniform. This is a uniform distribution. A truly uniform distribution will look perfectly like a box. I mean, just absolutely, perfectly like a box. 
That's more theoretical. Very seldom you actually see that with sample data. You will always see some variation in here with sample data. If it's pretty much just a box, then we refer to that as being uniform. Now, essentially, those are the basic shapes that we will come across when you're looking at data. And later on, we'll talk about how we use these shapes to make a determination as to um, what type of analytical tool or what approach we should take to the analysis.